All right, here we go. Number one, it says, write in slope-intercept form and graph. Slope-intercept form and graph. So I'm going to start with that one. Uh, no, my, my computer's acting up. All right. So line down the equal sign. We need to solve for y, so I need to get rid of the x. Add 3x to each side. We're left with 2y equals 3x minus 10. Last step, divide by 2, divide by 2. y equals 3 over 2 is 3 over 2x. Negative 10 divided by 2, that's negative 5. Now, why don't I simplify this anymore? Because uh, slopes are not in 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 uh, decimal form; they are in fraction form or whole numbers. So those of you that wrote 1.5, that's one point off if this was on the part A. So let's graph this. It says negative five our y-intercept. So I'm going to start way down here. Oops, oh, sorry at negative 5, so we got negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and negative 5. So I'm going to start right here. All right, and my slope is 3 up and 2 to the right. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. I'm going to do it again. 1, 2, 3, 1, and 2. And then from there, it doesn't fit on mine. If it fits on yours, that's fine. And then you just draw your line and it should have arrows at the end. Hands if you got that. Okay, good. There's graphing paper over here in case you needed some extra graphing paper. All right, let's go to number two. Number two. It says find a slope. I'm going to do that on the side over here. So I'm going to make some space here, and I'm going to zoom in for number two. And I said, find the slope. The very first thing you should have written is m equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Therefore, the very second thing you should have done is drawn blank, minus, and minus. Is that correct? If you don't do that, then you already might have made a mistake with some of the negatives. So let me show you that. From there, we need to substitute values in here, so that means I need to label this. x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2. So let's see. y sub 2 is 3. y sub 1 is 1 x sub 2 is 4, and x sub 1 is negative 2. Now, why is it important to write the minus before you substitute? Because this becomes negative times a negative is a positive. You got that wrong? Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's why I said I don't want it in your noodle. I want it written down. So what is 3 minus 1? 2. 4 plus 2, that's 6. Can I simplify this? No. Yes. M equals 1 over 3. Hands, if you got slope 1 over 3? Okay, good. So that was number 2. Go to number 3. Here we go. Number 3. Let me make some space here. Here we go. It says solve. So we have fractions all over the place, yes. Which means I need to multiply the entire equation times a common denominator. What's a common denominator for these? 30. 30. Yeah, because 5 can become a 10. So for these two, it's 10. But between 3 and 10, then that's 3 times 10 is 30. 
3 times x, that's 30x, plus 3 times 2, that's 60, and all that over 3. Minus 3 times x, that's 30x, over 5. 30 times x, that's 30x, plus 30 times 2, that's 60, and all that over 10. Can we simplify that? Yes. So let's see. 30x divided by 3, that's 10x, and 60 divided by 3, that's 20. Minus 30x divided by 5, that's 6x, equals 30 divided by 10, that's 3x, and 60 divided by 10, that's 6. And do we know how to solve this? Yes. Let me zoom in a little bit more. So from there, combine like terms, is that correct? That becomes 4x plus 20 equals 3x plus 6. From there, we need to get all variables to one side, isolate. Minus 3x minus 3x. We're left with x plus 20 equals 6. And then from there, minus 20 minus 20 x equals negative 14. Hands if you got that. Okay, good. Let me zoom out. That was number three. Negative 14. Let's go to number four. Here we go. Line down the inequality symbol. To leave the absolute value by itself, I need to add 7, add 7. We got absolute value x minus 8 less than 15. Is there anything else outside the absolute value? No. So at this point, I write two inequalities, negative 15. And if it's a negative, this, what happens to the symbol? It switches. So I write x minus 8 and one for a positive 15. And then I write x minus 8, and the symbol stays the same. Are we there so far? All right. So let me solve these. So at 8, at 8, we end up with x greater than negative, I'm sorry, yeah, negative 7. And for this one, at 8, at 8, x is less than 23 my god so let me graph this before i write my solution set because i want to know if it's an and or an or so let's see it's for good okay there you go all right let's see negative seven does it include the negative seven no it's open point and it's three x is greater than negative 7. What's greater than negative 7? Everything to the right. And I got 23. It's not included. x is less than 23. Everything to the left. And what do you guys notice? That this is an and. Oh, and. So, solution set. x such that negative 7, 23. x has to be in between those, yes? There it is. Since these are not close points, we leave them as is. So, solution set x such that negative 7 less than x less than 23. Hands if you got that. Okay, good. And the last one. Let's go to number, number 5. It says, what are the, inter, the x and y intercepts? I'm going to start with the x intercept. x intercept is where the line crossed the x-axis, which is right there, which is what? Negative 1. So my x-intercept is negative 1, 0. Y-intercept is where the line crossed the y-axis. Where did it cross? Right here. What is the x-value? 0. And what is the y? 5. 0, 5. Hands if you got that for this. Hands if you got all five of them. 4. Okay, I'll stop right there. So now, um, 
Look in your uh, study guide and tell me which ones these belong to. I got all of them from the study guide. Karina, number one, what does that one belong to? Number one on the warm-up is number 36 from your study guide. How about number two? Karina? Number 37. How about number three? Loving? Number 16 is number three. How about number four? Karina? Number 27. And number five, M. Number 35. So we already did all those from the study guide. And double check your work with uh, what we did right now. Okay. So to not waste time, our objective for today, I can master real numbers, expressions, inequalities, and one and two variable equations. So we're doing a community review on everything. So get your study guide in front of you. Get a blank sheet of paper for those of you that need to take notes again correctly. And I'm going to start from number 40. Because those are, I, I noticed most of you uh, didn't do number 40 for whatever reason, whether you didn't understand it or some of you didn't even do your study guide. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what? No, no, I was thinking something else. <laughs> No. Let's go to number 40. <laughs> Can you read us the instructions for number 40? John, go. All right. So let's use cubed for this one to make sure uh, we get organized. Oh, my goodness. Oh, uh, here it is. All right. So I'm going to write at the top cubed. So first of all, with blue, I'm going to circle important numbers. Important numbers here are $3 for the water bottles. Also, six dollars for tote bags, and they need a total of ninety dollars to be raised. Okay. Underline the questions or questions. What are they uh, asking for? Write in linear equations for the fundraising goal. That's number one. Second part: complete the table, and number three graph the equation. So three things that we need to do. All right, let's box in green important information. Important information is that uh, there it's water bottles and tote bags. So what variable can I use for water bottles? W, I'm going to label it there. How about for tote bags? T, I'm going to put a little T. A tote bag is a uh, a bag, like any bag that you can carry something that it's not a backpack, pretty much. Like a Walmart so kind of like that one, like Ms. V's bag over there. That's a purse you can carry. That's like a backpack. You carry it. Oh, it's bag. Okay. I can put that on my back. <laughs> that could be a tote bag. What I'm saying, mm -hmm. if you can put stuff in and you grab it like that with a handle, it's a tote bag. I think not a backpack. Not a backpack. <laughs> Anyways, here we go. So, uh, exclude anything else, and let's draw. Let's draw a table. Who are you talking about? The environmental club. Are there any other clubs? No. No, only one club. So one line down. 
one line down, one across. Okay, so here we know that it's the total. So what is the total that they want to raise? 90 buckaroonies, that goes right there. And here for this part is, uh, let's just write uh, selling. What are they selling? Let's see. They're selling what? Water bottles. How much? Three dollars. Do we know how many water bottles are they going to sell? No. So if they're three dollars each, it's three dollars times the amount of, of bottles that they're going to sell. Since we don't know, what variable can we use? No. W. So we're going to write three W. Didn't we label it already? Some of you are not paying attention because you're doing other stuff. Plus, what else are they selling? Six dollars per tote bag. Do we know how many tote bags? No, so what can we write? Six, no, not sixty. Six T. There it is. So, do you see the equation now? Yeah, so what would be our equation, everyone? Three W plus six T equals 90. Focus. So we're done with part A. Let's go to part B. Complete the table. Okay. Now pay attention to this part. Look up, please. Here they give me this one zero and then this one zero. And I remember Ms. V covered this X and Y intercept with you guys. Remember that? Where you substituted zero to each. But I showed you guys a shortcut. Look up, please. What is the first value that they give us? For W, it's what? It's what? Zero. So here instead of W, I write what? Zero. Or we can do the shortcut I showed you. The shortcut with your finger, if you cover on your paper the equation. So first of all, let's write the equation. Write it on the side. 3W plus 6T equals 90. We're going to do the work to the right of where you have the graph and all that. So, with your finger, you're going to cover this part. So do that with your finger. Don't scratch it out. With your finger, you're covering that part. And what do you see? So I'm going to write 6T equals 90. So why did I scratch out with my finger the W? Because W is what? What value? Because 3 times 0 is 0. So we were blocking it out. So we're left with that. Let's solve. Oh. Divide by 6. Divide by 6. T equals 15. That goes right there. Now with your finger again, cover up the other variable. The plus 6T, what do you have left? 3W equals 90. And why did I cover the 6t? Because here, instead of t, they told us to substitute what? 0. So 6 times 0 is 0. That's where we scratch it out. So therefore, divide by 3, w equals 30. Goes right there. Now, for 10, we're going to have to substitute into the original equation. So continue on. It's going to write 3. But instead of w, what is the value? times 10 plus 6t equals 90. Finish it off, please. So this was 30 plus 6t equals 90 minus 30 minus 30. We got 6t equals 60. Get it? 60. Anyway. Divide by 6, t equals 10. Hands if you got that. Okay, good. And that goes right there. All right, so let's plot this. I'm going to use for red the first one, 0 water bottles and 15 totes. 0, 15 is right there. The next one, 30 water bottles, 0 totes. 
30 water bottles, zero totes, right there. And then this one is 10 and 10. So 10 of these, 10 of these is about right there. Now check this out. Because we can't sell half a bottle and half a tote bag, we don't really connect the, the dots. Does everybody understand? No. Okay, watch. Here they're saying that it's from zero all the way to 30 water bottles, right? So if I was to connect all the little dots that are in between all the little points, it becomes a line. But that means that I'm talking about half a bottle of water. Do we have half a bottle of water? No. We only sell by one bottle of water, two, three, four, and so on and so forth. But for the purpose of you seeing that it is a straight or a, uh, a direct correlation, look up. Look. Would it make a straight line? Yes. It has, it's actually a linear. What happened? Okay. Here it goes. From here to here, it's 10. That means here it's five water bottles, yes? Which means this has to be divided into five sections. One, two, three, four. So this is one water bottle, two water bottles, three water bottles. Four and five. Everybody stand up to right there. Do we sell half a water bottle? No. That's why we don't put a little point here. Do we have one water bottle? Yes. That one, yes. How about two? Yes. How about three? Yes. Four. Yes. Five. Yes. So all those are included, but anything in between are not because we don't sell by half water bottles. Everybody understand that? Okay, good. All right. So, that was number 40. We good with that? Yes? Okay, let's go to 39. Can you read us, uh, go ahead, Jordan, number 39. Can read the uh, 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 uh,
Here for the total, they want us to write the amount left in the account. Do we know how much it's left? No, but here they give us f of x. So I'm going to write f of x. So let's see. Let's start with Ethan's information. How much does Ethan have? So we write 900. And it says he withdraws 150 a week. Minus is withdraw 150. Do we know how many weeks? No, so we're going to label that X. And do you see now your your function here? All right, so let's write it right here. It says F of X equals, what goes first? Negative 150X plus 900. Could we write it in slope-intercept form, right? Okay, so let me zoom in. Question, what is my y-intercept looking at this equation? Tell your neighbor, please. Okay, if you don't see it, let me rewrite it. y equals negative 150x plus 900. Tell your neighbor the y-intercept. Everyone, 900. By now, you should know that. If you don't know that, you're in trouble. The last part of the final, it's all graphing. In understanding graphs, 900. So if I'm going to plot it on 900 of here, how much are we going to scale our y-axis? 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1,000, 1,100. Okay, so I'm going to plot it at 900. There it is. What is my slope? 150 down, and how many to the right? 1. So that means all x's are by what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, because they stand for what? Weeks, every week. So what does the, all the way to 900 stand for? Very good, money. All right, so let's graph this. After one week, he has 900, but it goes down 150, so where are we at? 750, so it's in between 800 and 700, and then one to the right, so we place our point right there. Let me zoom so you guys can see it. From 900, we went to 750 and one to the right. Again, down how much? So from 750, you go down 150, so we are at what? 600 and one to the right. Now where are we at? 600 minus 150, that takes us to what? 450 and one to the right, right there. Let me erase. One till we reach the end of the bank account. So we're at 450. So minus 150, that takes us to 300 and one to the right, minus 150. 150 and one to the right, minus 150, that takes us to zero and six. Now, can I, can I connect those dots or those points? No, because they're withdrawing every what? Every week. Are they withdrawing half the week? No. So it's every week. That's why I cannot connect these. Jordan, let's say I have um, no, I have a car, and I'm gonna say, Jordan, I'll send you, I'll sell you the car. Okay. So you're saying, uh, okay, Mr. Q, sell me your car and uh, I'll give you half. And I say, okay, I'll give you half too. So I chop it in half. I can't chop it in half because it's the whole thing. Same thing with the withdrawals. You cannot withdraw half the week. So um, at the end, remember, it says find the and interpret the x-intercept. Before you leave, let's do this. We got one minute. Here we go. Look up. What's our x intercept? X intercept. Zero, six. Zero, six? No. Six, zero. Six, of x and zero. Six, 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 z
Isn't this the x-intercept right here? Yeah. So what does that mean? That it, this is in weeks, this is in money. What does that mean? After six weeks, we have what? Zero dollars. <laughs> okay, how about the y-intercept? Look at the y-intercept. It's zero, nine hundred, and what does that mean, everyone? Amount of money at zero weeks or at the beginning, right? A domain and range. How about domain? What is domain? From zero to six by ones, yes? How about range? But does it go by 100s? 150, 300, 450, and so on and so forth. By 150. Have a good one, guys. There is tutoring today. But I don't see you, see you guys tomorrow. Let me finish this one. Domain is from 0, 1, 2, 3. Four, five, six, because it goes up to six weeks. And the range, zero, 150, 300, 450, 600, 750, and 900. Well, yeah, because they're, we're going by 150s, right? Every every month. Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll continue in a little bit.